Okay, we can start now. Hi, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We will start our class by paying homage to the Buddha by uh, Namo Sata three times. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samba Tambo Tassa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samba Tassa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambo Dasa. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear Siali because uh, I mute everyone, so uh, you may not uh, hear their voices. So, yeah. But I can see the screen for now. You How can, can I screen see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I make the changes. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to our second lecture on what does Abhidhamma mean to us? And sorry for all the delays and the inconveniences um, from my side due to some technical uh, problems. So thank you for practicing this patience or candy. Thank you. So I hope that you were with me to an extent in the first lecture. So today is the second lecture. And before I move on to the new topic, which is one of the sub things, getting to know our mind. I do hope that you will remember that we have four sub things that getting to know our mind and body, the first one, and another one about karma and its function, and the third one, the law of the dependent origination and our life cycle, and the last one is the patana in daily life. So the first sub thing being getting to know our mind and body for this week. I have thought of focusing on how we can know our mind, what our mind is, and uh, how does it function. And prior to that, I think it would be nice to revise our first lecture. So this is the summary of our first lecture, which I began with the textual analysis. And it is just a summary. I think the notes are already there with you. And the organizers, they might have emailed you or they might have shared you in the WhatsApp group, right? So all the Buddha's teaching can be summed up, as I said last time, under two umbrella terms, that is the Dhamma and Vinaya. So what is Vinaya? Vinaya is the discipline. Why is Vinaya laid down? So when the monastic members of the Sangha or the members of the monastic community transgress any offense or any wrongdoing. So this Vinaya has to be laid down. So 
because this is laid down by means of the Buddha's authority on his disciple, and it is the meaning that is focus on the admonition given in accordance with one's offense or transgression. It is known as the admonition. And it talk mainly on the, for the purpose of the morality. So to be brief, the uh, monastic codes of discipline, they are mainly laid down for the purpose of the observance of the morality. So later also from time to time, we will see how much importance the morality is. And without morality, we are not able to make any further progress. Okay, so um, that's very important. And another one, we are living in the world of the conventional, we are living in the conventional world for which uh, the Buddha used the conventional terms to preach the Dhamma that suit the temperament of the beings. So when the Dhamma, it, if you are, you have the intellectual temperament or either you have the sadha or the um, confidence temperament, or maybe I am this dosa or the angry type, or maybe I have lots of greed, then um, it needs the Dhamma that goes in accordance with our temperament. So this is the, what the Sotanda teaches us about. And after the morality is pure to an extent, which we call the purification of the morality or the sila visodhi, our mind has to be pure. In order for our mind to be pure, our view, our understanding, our attitude also needs to be right, right? So this is having the right view. And when there is, in order to have the right view, we need to dispel wrong view. So this is what Sotanda Desana or the discourses is all about. Okay. And Abhidhamma, which we are mainly focusing, this is ultimately aimed to attain the wisdom. And in preaching the Abhidhamma, Buddha used the ultimate term to distinguish or to analyze or to point out the nature of the phenomena that is the mind and matter. So as we can all see from these three slides, um, sorry, from this uh, textual analysis on the teaching of the Vinaya, Sotanda and Abhidhamma, it is a beautiful combination of the Sila, Samadhi and Benya. So this is what we have discussed last week. And another one that we are relating to this week, that is the contents of Abhidhamma. What does Abhidhamma mainly explain? What does Abhidhamma mainly teach? So in that, we can say there are only two main topics which can be related with the two kinds of truth. The first one is the Banyati. What does, what is Banyati? Mostly translated as the concepts. That is the name and the things. Okay, suppose this is the book, right? Maybe you may not be able to see very clearly, but this is an Abhidhamma book. Because it is written about the Abhidhamma by the rector Seado, we call this a Bidama book. And I can't call this as a Vinaya book or a Sotanda book because mainly the content is the Abhidhamma. And when you hear the book, sort of, what do you see in your mind eye? So in your mind eye, you see mostly the books are in, in this rectangular form with a cover and the names printed on the cover or also at the sides. And there must be um, a sort of uh, a number of pages that would focus on that. And you can go to the content and you will see what the uh, subject matters are dealt about. So this is a bit of my book, right? So this is the name. This is the name of this book, a bit of my book. So I can call this a Sotanda book or Vinaya book, right? 
So the name itself, Abhidhamma book, is also Benyati, and the book itself is also a concept of Benyati. Why can't I call this a pen? I can't call this a pen, and this is a pen. And this pen, I can't call a book because of the different purposes and because of the different names that we all agree that is called, we call the general consensus, right? So everybody has accepted it's a pen. The purpose is for noting things down or purpose is for writing. So this is a pen. This I can't call a chair or a table, right? So the name, pen, and the shape, the form, or the pen itself, all these are concepts. So in that, Benyati includes name and things. So what does it refer to? It refer to a concept or the conceptual thought. Like when you hear the pen, it is normally the elongated or the long form, which we use for noting things down or we use for writing or we use for marking. So the image that you see in your mental eye as the concept, this is the conceptual thought or the mental construction. And these terms like the pens and the tables and the chairs, the computer, all these are the conventional expression. And I'm sitting in a chair and so are you. And all of us are looking at a device which might be phone or iPad or computer or any electronic devices through which we are communicating. All these are concepts, right? In terms of the ultimate reality, then it would be different. But this is a pen, this is the English word. And we also adopt this ball pen, the same thing, but it might be different in your language, in your mother tongue, right? And you also might give a name to this pen on a general consensus. So this is what um, conventional truth is about. It is true that this is called a pen. Nobody can deny it. Nobody would call this is a book, this is a chair, this is a table. So in that, it is true in the conventional sense, in that we call a conventional truth. And why is this conventional truth necessary? We talk about Abhidhamma, do we need to know the concept? Because Abhidhamma mainly talks about mind and matter. So the word mind and matter itself is also the concept. Right? And when we talk about matter later, we will be able to discern what matter is all about. So now let's see, why is this concept used for? That is the um, useful status. Now I'm sharing my knowledge on Abhidhamma, which I have learned from many teachers. So my teachers are to be treated with much respect, right? I can treat my teacher as a friend because of the gratitude that I owe upon them, because of the um, jidana or midda that they have shared their knowledge in that I have to help them in respect and esteem to my teacher, right? And in the same way, um, obligation of the here human society. As a student, I have to treat my teacher with respect and help in doing the shows and like um, some other support that they might need. Maybe sort of the technical support or the uh, whatever support that they might need, we are supposed to do that. And in the same way, when we talk about the status, let's go back to the status and obligation because these two are relating to each other. We all have parents. Without parents, we won't be born. We won't come to this human world for any reason without the parents. So this is the status. And again, this is the designation that we have made. This is, this is the parents, these are the children and the brothers and sisters in the family, aunt and uncles and so on, and grandma and grandfather and so on. 
we can do wrong to our parents. Because it is so much gratitude that they have brought us to this human world. We have to treat them with um, this love, care and respect. And also we have to uh, take care of them when we can. When we were young, they have brought up me, brought up us in various way. They have nurtured us, they have cultured us. And when we have grown up, of course, we have to take care of our parents, our teachers, and those like uh, for the monastic members of the Sangha that you are also uh, offering them with the alms food and the uh, four requisites, medicine, uh, robe, and the dwelling place and um, accessories and so on, right? So this is the obligation that we have to do. And it is also a kind of sila or morality. Because when we talk about the morality, what we mainly think is about abstaining or refraining. So let's say morality has two aspects. One aspect is the restraint or abstaining from killing, telling lies and taking what is not given, abstaining from taking intoxicants and so on. So this aspect of morality is the um, restraint. Another one is the fulfillment. So again, I will go back to that restraint. This morality is called the wari da sila. That is the restraint or abstaining aspect of the morality. And another part of sila that we have to fulfill in the obligation of the human society regarding the status, uh, like the parents towards the children, the children towards the parents and the teachers and the students and the uh, donors and the devotees and the members of the Sangha, the doni. So this obligation, this is also to be fulfilled. When the supporters support us with the four requisites, what do we have to do? We have to share what we know with them. We have to practice the Dhamma and live a righteous or noble life. And from our part as well, these are the duties or the responsibilities that we have to fulfill. So this is the obligation of the human society and this morality as well. And when we talk about the status and morality and so on, it is also very important. Though we, because we live in the conventional world, we can't stay without them. In Myanmar, we have the Chui Dagong Pagoda, and most of you might know. So we have great esteem in the Chui Dagong Pagoda because we believe that it is where the relics of the four um, former Buddhas are enshrined. Maybe to a non-Buddhist, it may be a pile of the bricks or some sort of shape um, in the form of the stupa that people are paying that, that uh, so much respect. But in reality, there are the attributes of the Buddha which we held very high in esteem. We can treat Sri Dagobagoda with a house or a building the same. We can treat the same because of the different attributes or the qualities that lies in it. And in the same way, conditions of success in life and so on, we all have to work hard to have a good life and also successful life, successful in the sense that we are healthy, we are happy, and we are doing good for the benefits of the world, for the family, and for ourselves. In that, we also need a sort of success. So from this, we might see how important the concept or the penalty is. Then, Going to see its nature, we will see that this penalty changes its designation when the form 
or substance changes. So I'm sitting in a chair and this is made of plastic, right? So it's called plastic chair. And you might be sitting in a wooden chair or you might be sitting on a sofa or some of you might be sitting on the bed, right? Depending on the material by which it is made of, the name got changed. That's why the nature of penyati always changes when the form or substance changes. Not by saying the chair, that every chair in the world are the same. It is not like that. Depending on the quality and the material by which it is made of, the name or the designation would change, right? And suppose this tissue paper, suppose it is made of bamboo, but nowadays there are many that are not made of bamboo, right? And suppose this is made of bamboo, this is called a tissue paper, right? But when it is printed into this, we call this a book, bamboo. Or we might have a bamboo table. So when it is made in the form of a rectangular shape and for the things to put in or to write down, we call this table, right? So in this way, when the form or substance changes, the penyati or the concept changes. And another very prominent example that I'm wearing the dress of the nun. I cannot wear your dress and you also won't wear our dress because of our uh, different practices. But basically all these are made of the cloth, either maybe cotton or the synthetic or whatever material it might be, even if it is made of the same product when it is made or stitched into different shape or form, the purpose and the name all got changes. So this is the nature of the penyati. And for now, I think it should be clear. So let's move on to the another one, ultimate truth. That is the paramata. Can you see the slide well? Can you see the slide well? Or you can't? Yes, we can, we can see clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Charlie. Because last week there was some feedback that I have uh, put the white ground and I have used different sort of color fonts. So it was difficult for the, some of the participants uh, to read it. And at their suggestion, I have prepared this with the blue background and the white font. So I hope it would be um, it would help support you with clearer or better vision. Then going back to the another truth, that is the ultimate truth, that is the paramata satya. It would also be termed absolute truth, ultimate truth or absolute truth. Sorry. Um, it is altogether fourfold. The first one, consciousness, Jada. And some of you might have learned Abhidhamma. And to some who are new to Abhidhamma as well, please don't worry. I will try to explain step by step. The first one, consciousness, Jada. Okay, Jada is the Pali word. In Myanmar pronunciation, we call Seida, but we adopt the word and we call Seid, right? So this is our mind, one part of our mind. What is the main topic of our discussion today? Getting to know our mind, okay? Please understand our mind has two parts. The first one, consciousness, which in Pali we call Jada, okay? And the second one, mental states in Pali we call Jita Sika. Would you also recite yourself? It's okay if you don't turn on the mic, right? Jita Sika, right? What is it? Jada and Jita Sika. Jada is the in Yama is Seda or Se and Jita Sika, 
Siddhartha or Siddhartha. So these two are called as mind. Okay, our mind. So please understand our mind is composed of two factors. Okay, consciousness is okay. What is another one? We don't know. What is Jitasika? So here it is translated as the mental states, mental factors. Mental state means the state of our mind. Mental factors mean the factor with which our mind is composed of and mental qualities the qualities of our mind, mental properties, the properties of our mind and mental constituents, that is the constituents or the factors or the components by which our mind is made of. So what happened is that these mental states are also very important or the equally important. When we are talking about being happy or being excited or being compassionate, having loving kindness or joy or the confidence or sada, or else um, maybe that you got sort of irritated or you may not that have to wait long time for me, then sometimes when we do not get what, when we don't get what we want, then we get upset. Sometimes we have depression, right? Sometimes we don't know what to do. We are so much in doubt. Sometimes we are jealous, right? We also work hard, but when somebody um, got a better position uh, by some unfair means or by any means, sometimes we got jealous and sometimes we have remorse that I should have done this, I shouldn't have done that, right? And then sort of attachment or liking Oh, I like that food so much. This is my favorite. Just by hearing it, then I feel happy and rejoice. All these states, they are what is known as the mental states or mental factors, the jitasika. So what we are saying or addressing in our life is mainly based on that mental states or mental factors, which is known as the jitasika, right? Jitasika is composed of two words. The first one here, jita, okay? Here pronounced as C-E-T-A, jita. Uh, when I talk about this Romanized Pali, then I thought that I also would need to share with you the chart. For those who are not familiar with the Romanized uh, version or the writing of the Pali, and I think um, we would need that. And, and I will prepare and I will try to send it soon. I have thought of preparing, but uh, I have forgotten somehow and it, it wasn't here yet. So here, going back to this Jitasika, right? Jitasika, the first part, Jita, C-E-T-A, is spelled with Jita. It's a synonymous term for Jita, right? Okay, Jita and Jita is the same. And ika, here mean depending on, okay? Jeda mean mind and ika means depending on. So jeda sika mean depending on mind. These mental states, they depend on our mind for arising. It means without the mind, they are not able to uh, exist. That is the meaning. Later, we will come into some detail about the nature or characteristic of the jada. So among these two factors which compose our mind, consciousness and mental state, please understand that consciousness is the chief, right? This is primary. And mental states or jada cigar are the dependent states that has to depend on our mind for arising existing. Bear in mind that, okay, jada is primary, jada or consciousness is primary, and jada siga, they are the dependent states which has to depend on our mind. But please don't think that because they have to depend on our mind, they are less powerful. It is not at all. Though they depend on the mind, they 
changes the quality of our mind, or we would say they color the mind. The mind is like pure water. See, the cigars are different color. Okay, when you add red color, it will become red. The water will become red. When you add blue, it will become blue. And because of green, the water color also got changed into green. And another example, if you are good at drawing, you have the canvas, canvas or the paper for drawing. First, it is plain white, like pure. Then later you will draw. You will use the pencil or the paints or different color. Then you have a very attractive, beautiful picture, maybe scenery or uh, maybe about people or about the food or whatever, the fruits very colorful. In the same way, Jada is like the plain canvas and Jada cigars are like the colors that you draw on the canvas to make a picture. Without the canvas, you are not able to draw, right? But the canvas alone doesn't mean anything, just a white plain thing. It doesn't give you any taste or any part, right? Only when the picture is drawn with different color, it gives you this mental construction about different thoughts, that what kind of message or idea or the taste that you want to give to the uh, person who looks at it. And there must be many motive or the objective behind your painting, many meaning behind your painting. So that should be enough for now for this consciousness and mental states. These two constitute what we call our mind. Okay. Mind is the English word which everybody know. Uh, whoever know the English know. And please remember one Pali word. Nama. Later we will see. Okay. Nama. Nama is the word that represent our mind which is composed of two factors, consciousness, jada, and mental states, jada sika, right? And in nama is a Pali word, and in nama we call na, right? Then moving on to the third one, the third ultimate reality. Now we are focusing on the four ultimate realities and have come to the third one that is translated as the material qualities, material properties, matter. In Pali, we call rupa, right? We call rupa in Pali, material qualities, material properties. Again, this is a simple example. I'm holding the pen. Is it soft or hard? Normally we would say hard, right? And I also have tissue paper in another hand. Comparing to the pen, this tissue is softer, right? But at least for a person who is strong enough, you can still break this pen. Then comparing to the table, we would say this pen is light, right? This pen is light and table is quite heavy quite because it needs to be stable. Huh? It needs to be big enough so that we can uh, put things on. Because of the comparison, we have this quality. This is hardness and then softness. And comparing to the table, this is lightness and the table heaviness. These are the qualities quality of what we call the earth element or battery. We now for the time being, you all are sitting, let's say we all are sitting in the chair. And where is the chair located on the floor? And this floor is part of this building. And this building is constructed on the hot material, which we call the up, right? So the up being the foundation for the materials to exist, to be, to be built up or to be expanded, 
we call earth element. So when we talk about the earth element, we don't talk about the physical earth, but we talk about the quality that lies in it, the quality that is inherent in that, that is either hardness or softness, lightness or heaviness, right? So these are the quality of the material or matter. Sometimes we also call them as material properties or matter. So the nature of this material um, quality, it never changes. Because we can make this into powder. You pound this, you broke this, you pound it, and there is small particle. And in the same way, you broke this table and you break uh, a piece of brick or uh, maybe um, burn the paper into ashes, there is small powder, right? Even in the smallest powder, the quality remains the same. This is the nature of rupa, right? So the nature of the paramata or the ultimate reality is that it never changes. So um, on the fourth line that you can, after the fourth line, we can see the nature of ultimate reality never changes. It is real forever. And again, when we talk about the matter or material quality, they do not exist alone. They also live in a group, a group of material qualities, right? So in the same way, the same thing is applying to the mind. Now we have come to the understanding that at least or basically the mind is composed of two factors, consciousness and mental state. And again, you can see the plurality in the translation, mental states, mental factors, mental qualities, it is not one. We have altogether 52, five two in number, right? So when our mind arises, there is also a group of the um, consciousness and mental factors arising together. They form a unit, a minimum number of Eight. Please remember that number, okay? Our mind at least is composed of minimum number of eight. And in the same way, uh, rupa, or the material qualities or properties, they also exist in a minimum number of eight. This we will study later in detail, right? And now we have come up to the um, three factors, consciousness, mental states, and then material qualities or properties. So in a way we can say, though they are three, we can combine them as mind and body. Rupa mean body and consciousness and mental state together, they are called mind. So three ultimate realities can be combined into two abstract terms, that is mind and body or mind and matter, which, our, which we are composed of. When uh, our body is dissect, move into different parts, we can see only mind and body, nothing more than that. So in another way, um, it also say that we are composed of the five aggregates or kanda. Okay, don't get confused. I will explain again. Our body is composed of mind, mind and matter. Mind and body, we are composed of. Human beings are composed of mind and body. By mind, we refer to two, consciousness and mental states. And by body, we refer to this material qualities or material properties, which number 28, 28, right? But the minimum unit being only eight. 
whatever powder, even smallest particles you take, you will see this ate nothing more than that, including this petal weed that I have given as an example. And these three, the consciousness, mental states, and material qualities. Can you see the last line? Please, can you please see the last line of the slide? Consciousness, mental states, and matters are conditioned sankata. Conditioned. It means they can be changed due to the conditions. For example, now we all are looking at this screen. Then I can see some of you and you can see me here. For example, here I can see six participants in a row, right? So you are my object of the seeing. Then what are the conditions? Why do we have this consciousness? Where is it stored? It is not stored anywhere. It doesn't store in our heart. It doesn't store in our brain. It doesn't store anywhere in our physical body, but only when the conditions are favorable, then we have this seeing. Of course, we need to have good eyesight. We need to have good vision so that we can see. And there also must be the object. Right? Now I'm looking at your face. Suppose there is a lady in front of me. Then she is my object of seeing. There must be the object so that I can see. Or at a larger uh, display, I can see the computer and I can see the door, windows, and here tables around me and the books at a wider vision. And do you see me clearly? Yes, because we have to turn on all the lights in the room. Uh, before we class this, uh, we start this class, we have to choose the place and um, Mr. Charlie and Masui, uh, they, they say that this place has good lighting and this place hasn't have enough lighting because you have to see me clearly, right? That's why we have to have enough light. So light is also another supporting condition. And of course, you have to pay attention, right? Sometimes we don't pay attention and you might be looking at the string, but you might be relating to something that you have heard of from the Dhamma talk or from the teaching. Then when you are relating, you are just looking, but you don't really see me because your mind is somewhere else, right? So now, Going back to these conditions for this seeing to arise happen. The first one, we might have good, we must have good vision. And there must be the object to be seen, which we generally call visible object because it can be seen with the eye. So every object, any object that can be seen with the eye is the visible object. These two are the main condition. Okay, we have our eye is good and there is the object. But suppose there were not enough light, the vision would be blur. Light, this is another supporting condition. And attention, this is the other one. Light and attention are two supporting condition, conditions. And the eye and the object, visible object, these two are main condition. So only when these four conditions are together, there is seeing or seeing consciousness. You say, I see. I was, I often ask you, can you see me? Can you hear me? Right? So, um, this seeing is supported by many conditions. When the conditions are not enough, there is not clear vision. Right? So, in this, um, we call this is the conditioned phenomena. Only when the conditions are complete, the mind would come into existence. And when we go to the, 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 the third material, the third one, material qualities or material properties or rupa, they are also conditions. You would learn four conditions. 
That is karma. What is karma? Karma is action. Because of our past action, we are born as human being and still different, having different um, background, different um, understanding, different intellectual level and all these things and different form and shape, attitude, everything is different. These are the result of the karma, right? And because of our karma, how our body is manifested or appear or formed in different ways. Another one, the mind or the jada. When you are happy, how do you feel? Or well, after this class, I'm sort of relaxing and I feel light and I feel refreshed and like I feel good like anything. But before that sort of, I have also sort of some um, concern and stress that will it go well and like when uh, the Zoom didn't work well, then I also have concern or am I, are we going too late? Then so my facial expression would change. Because of the happy mind, like the last day of the exam, we are so happy, excited. Or when you have some uh, good position or something, then you are so happy, you feel so light. And when I got upset, you might see me looking frowning or like unhappy face and also looking at me, then you would feel also an unpleasant, uncomfortable, so sort of thing. So this is how Jada bring changes to our physical body. In that we can see the mind and body are always relating to each other, always connecting to each other. Sometimes the mind is the origin. Your happy mind will make you light and cheerful. The effect is in the body. Sometimes you have stomach ache, you have headache, right? This happens in the physical body. Then you feel um, not happy. The origin is the body, but the effect also go to mind. So they are sort of relating. So there are four conditions for the matter to arise. Karma, the, our past karma apparently. Also, we can also do some sort of um, supporting karma in this life. Maybe some people past karma is not so good, but in this life that people try to accumulate men, merit or the um, meritorious deeds in as, as much as possible, then the karma also support to be in a better position or a better life. So another one, Jada. Jada bring changes to this body. And then Udu, here the temperature, heat and cold. So in Yango, even though it is winter, um, it is not that much cold. The weather is just moderate. But in some hilly regions of the country or in some other part of the world, it would be chilly, right? In this October. So this weather also bring changes to your body. In the snow, in the strong wind, you can't go without your head or your body cover with warm clothes because the effect will come. You have to prevent yourself from catching cold. And in the same way, when the weather is too warm or too hot, it's too sweating, you need the fan or you need um, the fresh air or you need air con to adjust the temperature, right? So this is how heat and cold temperature bring changes to our body. Another one that is also uh, easy to understand, that is the nutrition or the nutriment. Suppose you have high, your, your blood pressure tends to be high. You can take some uh, salty food or also you can get uh, sort of much worry or excited because it tends to change your blood pressure. And if you have the stomach ache, you have to avoid taking spicy food. So this is how it, the nutriment or the nutrition changes to our body. In a way, it says that nutrition conditions our body or make changes to our body. So in this way, we can understand if we sum up 
among the four ultimate realities. The first one, consciousness or jada, and the second one, mental states or mental factors, jada sika. These two compose our mind, and another one is our body. Here we talk not we don't talk about the appearance or the shape of our body, but what we focus is the material qualities or the material properties that is inherent in that matter. So these three, they tend to change due to the conditions that explain above. So they are known as the Sankhata. The last one, ultimate peace, that is the um, liberation from craving um, or ultimate peace, that is the Nibbana. Among the peace, Nibbana is seen to be the highest or the ultimate. This we all know. Even during a session of meditation, then when your mind is tranquil and when the, we can um, clean and we can calm our mind down to an extent, it becomes so peaceful, so bright and so shining, then we can feel that peace, this tranquility of the quality of mind. So even if that moment is that much peaceful, Nibbana would have been so much peaceful. That's why among the peace, it is the highest, it is the absolute, it is the ultimate. That's why it's known as the Nibbana. In Nyama, we call Nibbana, right? Nibbana is a Pali word, Nibbana is a uh, adopted word, a loan word from the Pali. Liberation from craving. Nibbana, we can divide into two parts, ni and bana, not bana, because fa is changed into b according to the uh, grammatical rule. Ni and bana, b a n a bana. Bana means craving, ni means no, no craving. Hmm? It means Nibbana is crave, liberation from craving. Then how about anger? Of course, no anger also. But why is only craving mentioned? Because it is so powerful. Because later when we come to this loba, because craving is a synonymous term of this loba or attachment, right? Because of this attachment or this craving, we are having lives, life or existences, life existences for what? If there were no craving, if you really don't want the next life, you must really work hard until you could eradicate all the mental impurities, mental defilements. And of course you won't be reborn at, at all. If you really wish to attain and if you really work hard accordingly, so that Nibbana is unconditioned, like the former tree. tree. So uh, that should be enough for this slide. Now let's move on to the another one. Now we are focusing, we started focusing on the ultimate realities after we have talked about the concept or the conceptual thoughts. And the first ultimate reality among four is the Consciousness. Yes, here. Consciousness in Abhidhamma is analyzed into very much detail. Um, so here, the first one, characteristic. Can you see four factors here? Characteristics, function, manifestation and the proximate cause. That might be new to some of you, but don't worry. Um, please just um, uh, pay attention and you will come to understand to an extent. Characteristic, here characteristic mean nature. The prominent quality or the salient quality. What is your nature? What is my nature? Everybody has different nature, okay? Common nature, we all are human being, in that we are common. But each human being has different characteristics. 
maybe you are very strong with sadha or confidence, right? Then you are so generous, you are willing to help others. You are uh, keen to observe the morality, like you are happy to offer the fruits, flowers and water to the Buddha, uh, thinking about the attributes of the Buddha. And also you try to practice meditation as much as you can, maybe 10, 20 minutes or half an hour or every day, because you have this sada, strong confidence or belief in the triple gem, karma and its result. We must really work hard for our own attainment. Nobody can do, right? The Buddha has shown us the way and we are there to work hard ourselves, right? Here, I also try to share my understanding and even if you pay attention in this class, I hope that you will uh, come to sort of understanding and remembering to an extent because I have been repeating very often on the uh, materials provided here or the data provided here. So characteristic or nature. Jada is one of the ultimate realities, paramata, right? In Yama, we call paramata. What is the nature of ultimate reality? It means the nature never changes. Okay, what is the nature of ultimate realities? The nature never changes. Please try to listen. Nature never changes. Sorry, I mean, please try to pay attention. Nature never changes. But the jada it, itself might go changing, but the nature never changes. Suppose we are growing older and mature day by day, but your good nature always remain in you is like that. The nature never changes, but the thing itself go on changing. I don't want you to be go to get misguided or misled to have the thought that Jada never changes. It is not so. Your Jada one hour ago, one minute ago is not the same as now. It comes, it comes into existence, it exists and it disappear, right? So your happiness yesterday doesn't last today and your worry or anxiety you are having now, it may not last another minute, another hour. The jada itself keep on changing, but its nature doesn't change. This is really important. We don't, we must not get misinterpreted, right? See, characteristic, knowing of an object. The nature of jada is knowing of the an object, awareness of an object, cognizing an object. Please relate to our former discussion. At the beginning of the four ultimate reality, we say that our mind is composed of consciousness and mental states and consciousness is the leader, right? Consciousness is the leader. So what is the tax or the nature of this leader? Knowing of an object. Let's say the tax of the leader is knowing the responsibility. Okay, the leader know what to do. But can the leader do everything? No. The leader need a team which would work accordingly, right? In the same way, Jada itself cannot do anything. It just simply know. Just simply aware the object, know the object. We can say bear awareness. Yes, the pen. There is no like and no dislike. Nothing in this Jada, right? So just knowing this as a pen. So the characteristic of nature of Jada is knowing of an object. This in Pali, just to please just listen. Vijjana. Okay, not Vija. Vijjana. Jaming, knowing. It comes from the root nya. Like Vijjana, Senya, Penya. It comes from the. Um, Bhavad root nya, it means knowing. Vija nana, knowing an object. Then, how does it function? Function, forerunner of mental states, presides over them and accompanied by them, just as I have um, 
explain now. Function. What does consciousness do? Okay, its nature is knowing the object. What does it do? Forerunner of mental states. It is the leader of the mental states. Presides over them. Yes, Jada is the leader, the president. It just look over the Jada Sika and accompanied by them. It comes in a team, right? The leader or the prominent walk and come in a team in the same way Jada, which simply knows or aware an object is the forerunner or the leader of the mental states and accompanied by them. So this is the second way of analysis of consciousness by means of the function it does. And another one, manifestation is a technical term. So um, manifestation means how it appears in your mind. How it appears in your mind is what is meant by manifest or manifestation here. When we talk about Jada, how does it appear in your mind? It means the way it appears in meditation experience, that is the manifestation, as a continuity of processes. Jada doesn't exist alone. Jada exists with a group of mental states, which is called mind. And again, when it arises, it doesn't arise alone. It comes in a series of thought or a series of uh, or a process of thoughts, which we call VT. Later, I will explain when we come to the um, portion on the consciousness. But why does it say the way it appears in meditators experience? We are living in a busy life. We don't have much time to think about how Jada is functioning. You have to get up, you have to go for a walk or you have to get up for meditation or whatever you are walking in a tight schedule. And for some, it may be almost around getting midnight, right? Your time is also very precious. So you don't have much time to think about what, how Jada is working, right? You must get works done in time. But when you are in meditation, your mind is focused, your mind is concentrated, then you can see its nature, right? So that's why it say the way it appears and how it appears in meditators experience. So yes, consciousness appear in meditators mind as a continuity of processes. That is the sandhana. Sandhana mean in our, um, the, the, the process here. Sandhana here means the process. And the proximate cause. Proximate cause means near cause. Why does consciousness arise? That is the thing. It tries to explain here. Mind and matter, nama and rupa, as consciousness cannot arise alone. Yes, we have known that. In the absence of mental states and material phenomena. It means for us human being, we are composed of mind and matter. We have matter. And also another part of mind is the mental state apart from consciousness. So this is the meaning. So I hope it should be clear by now that we first look at how consciousness is analyzed in terms of Abhidhamma. The first way is by a specific or the characteristic, specific characteristic or the uh, specific nature, particular nature, that is awareness of the mind, bare awareness, no judgmental. This is the nature, the function, being the forerunner or the leader of the mental states and precise over them and associate with them, being associate mean together. So this is also another technical term here, sorry, accompanied by them. So when you study Abhidhamma, you find this term as accompanied by or associated with. It means together, existing together, coexisting. So these are sort of technical terms you might, you might be expecting in studying Abhidhamma and manifestation, how it appears in meditators' eyes. Yes, 
when we meditate, we can see better how our thoughts are going in processes in a series of consciousness. Right now, you are sitting in the chair, right? You are looking at me in the chair, me, you are touching, your body is touching the chair. So there is the touching consciousness or the body consciousness. Then you hear me, this is hearing consciousness. And you also can see me, right? At the same time, and if you are hungry, then you might be chewing something because this might be lunchtime um, in the East. And for people in the West, then they might have some sort of snack. Or, or for the, in some part, they would, that would be the lunchtime. Then sitting in the chair, looking at me, hearing me, chewing the food, or thinking and relating. Because I always ask you to relate back. Okay, think, pay attention. I'm asking you to do all these things, right? So the mind is so fast that we think all this can happen at the same time. Actually, it is not. How first the mind is? And for some of my people who are away from home, okay, when I talk about Sri Dagom Bagoda, they immediately see that. Or you might not be living in your country of origin. Then when you talk about your homeland, your mind go immediately there. You don't need to buy a ticket. You don't need visa. You don't need anything. The mind goes so fast. At the same time, you have met your family, people, and you have done a lot of jobs in just one sitting without needing to move anywhere, without needing to cost anything, right? So that match the mind is fast or quick. So that's very apparent. Now let's move on to the slides. Uh, our, we, 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 it's already 10.20, so it means about only about 10 minutes more to left. And here, classification of consciousness data. So how can we classify or divide our mind? There are many ways of classifying. And here I have chosen one way because it can be easily understood and it's also important. Classification on the ethical basis and type jihati. So on the ethical basis, we classify jada by means of the unwholesome. I hope at least we are familiar with this term, akusala. Akusala. In Nyama, we call akuto. Unwholesome, immoral, demeritorious, unskillful, bad, evil. Here we can see HMS translation as there can be. Another one, kusala, which we try to accumulate that is wholesome, moral. And in contrast to demeritorious, it is meritorious. And as opposing to unskillful, this kusala is skillful and it is good. So there is another type. And of course, when we do something evil, unwholesome, immoral, akusala, there is the result. So long as you cannot yet eradicate it by the power of mega or the path, then the result will come. Maybe in this life or in the next life. It depends on how uh, big or great the in intensity of your work is. Akusala. So when there is unwholesome, we of course, we have to expect the result of unwholesome. In the same way, when you do something good, you are so kind, helpful. When you um, help people in their time of need, you don't have to pray your jadana or your uh, result of this wholesome action will come back to you. This is the result of wholesome, right? And the last one, uh, 
I, I should let you familiar with this one. The first one, right? Unwholesome, akusala, right? That is in Yama akuto. And wholesome, moral, that is kusala, that is the kuto. And then the resultant, akusala vipaka, right? This vipaka, vipaka means resultant that you gain from doing something. Result of unwholesome, akusala vipaka. Result of wholesome, kusala vipaka. In Yama, we call this vipaka as vipak, right? Vipaka. And the last one, kiriya, mean functional. For this kiriya, it doesn't need any result, just mere doing. For example, we all know, let's say all of us know, um, arahant. In Yama, we call yahanda, right? Arahant doesn't have any more rebirth. Right? And then does or do the arahants also perform, still perform marriage, meritorious deeds? Yes. From time to time, they might cultivate loving kindness or the mitta on the living beings. They're doing good. But since, but since they're doing of good, doesn't need result because they won't be reborn in next life. They don't need result. So such doing good is term functional, mere doing. Here functional means just mere doing. Just mere doing. So this is how it is classified. But it sounds so technical, right? Akusala, akusala, akusala vipaka, akusala vipaka, and uh, might be thinking Kiriya Siale has been reciting Pali very often, right? But uh, this is how this teaching is recorded, at least to get you familiar, even though you can't remember everything. Then we need further explanation. See why it is called Akusala or Kusala. So here, the nature of Akusala and Kusala. Akusala, that is faulty, that is wrong. There is fault in doing akusala and with bad result. Akusala are never right and never produce good result. So of course, we have to expect bad result from that. Akusala is nature is faulty and produces bad result, evil consequences. So the Pali say, sa vajja, vajja, v-a-j-j-a, vajja, vajja means fault. In Yama is wiza, right? Sa vajja, doka vipaka. So vipaka we know is the resultant. Doka is something painful, some sort of suffering. Doka vipaka, that produces bad result, that produces painful result. Sa vajja, also to be blamed. Who will blame you like uh, when we do akusala who will blame us later sometime we blame ourselves or uh, the world or the virtuous people will blame at us and even though if you don't get blamed but the result will come and another one kusala that is no fault Akusala is never, uh, when kusala, when you do kusala, you never have to feel repent. You will always be happy. Before doing marriage or during doing marriage or after performing that marriage, whenever you think you will always feel happy. So this is the potential or the power of kusala. So it is in our hand which one we will choose, either akusala or kusala. Because all of us want happiness, nobody wants pain, nobody wants the physical pain, nobody wants the uh, mentally unpleasant feeling or mental pain. So this is kusala. Then we have the, uh, so in Pali it say anā vajja. Vajja is the fault. Here anā and na is the same. It means 
it shows the negation, no fault. It's not wrong. To do kusala is never wrong. And sukha vipaka, sukha means happiness or pleasant, vipaka means resultant. Give you pleasant resultant. That is the anavajya sukha vipaka lekana kusala. So this is what says the text say. And here we have further explanation. It causes, that, that is the explanation for kusala, right? Kusala causes contemptible states. What is contemptible? That is the disgusting, reprehensible. Kusala or this merit causes the disgusting or contemptible or reprehensible states to shake, to tremble, to waver and destroyed. This is the potentiality of this merit. The merit, all will, all the merits will destroy or shake off all the unpleasant, disgustable, contemptible states. That is the meaning. And here, very important, healthy. These days, we all are have concern and worry about this coronavirus. That is the physical health. Uh, our our place's center is uh, very close to the airport, Yango International Airport. So from time to time, you might be hearing the aircraft flying over us. Uh, sometimes they fly so low that we can see a uh, very huge aircraft. So uh, please don't get disturbed um, as you hear the aircraft going. And sometimes it's disturbing, but sometimes looking up to the sky and we can radiate loving kindness that may they all be safe and may they all reach their destination without any hindrances or any difficulty or any problem, right? So we can cultivate merit. Going back to this healthy, now we're talking about mental health because we have so much concern for physical health that we got it tested, checkup from time to time. Yes, we must go for a checkup. We must go for follow-up with our annual checkup or that we have bought this uh, packet. We have go for this, but here we have to care for the mental health as well. Healthy, kusala makes our mind healthy. It means when we are doing kusala, marriage, moral, wholesome, good actions, we are mentally healthy. In another word, we can say like sort of emotional well-being. Our emotion, our state of mind, they are healthy, they are fit because of this kusala. So if we want to have some good resistance, in our mind, our emotion, we have to do this exercise very often. Faultless, blameless, that is the anavijja. And skillful chika, skillful, um, it means skillful to avoid from evil and to do good. Skillful in avoiding evil and skillful in doing good. And with happy result, Sukha Vipaka. So we also have to try to be mentally healthy by performing merit because they are never to be repented, never to be regretted before, while and after doing this, performing this. And for the happy result also, it is guaranteed. Like material things, it is current, its guarantee is very limited. You bought a device, guarantee is only one year, two year, or even during that moment, if it is not technical problem, they won't take care. That's your responsibility, right? But this health, the warranty can be longer and last longer as much as our marriage is powerful. 
it's already 33 but let me continue about two three minutes and i will wind up right because i want to finish about this akusala and kusala so on the contrary unwholesome consciousness akusala it is accompanied by the three unwholesome roots akusala he two or three poisons yes this akusala or unwholesome is often uh, referred to as the poisons because it makes it harm us it make our mind dirty defiled polluted and whoever take the poison will get harm in any way and so long as this akusala is in our mind the same benefit will come so we are familiar with this term at least loba dosa moha greed or attachment that is what is represented by loba that uh, so long as it has not been eradicated by this mega then we still have it hatred anger of course we all come often very often delusion ignorance these are the forces that are controlling us from behind then why are they called unwholesome because they make our mind unhealthy and it is morally blameworthy and productive of painful results so it is just the opposite um, here you might find one term three unwholesome roots akusala on the third line three unwholesome roots akusala hetu another term root you might grow plants at home or you might see many plants on the ground or in the gardens like there are some small plants with the weak root we can easily move out like the weeds and the small plants we can easily move out but when the uh, trees are grown up and firmly rooted in the ground it's difficult if difficult to removed even you might cut the branches but the tree would go on growing because the root is there right the roots suck all the energy and it fortifies all the branches the leaves and the fruits and flowers uh, to grow so in the same way these three are so firmly rooted in our mind as they are termed as he do or root right please remember this word he do he to mean root, firmly rooted. What do we have to do if we want to remove that very strong big tree? We have to uproot. We have to take out all the roots. Only then we can um, cut that tree down. So on the contrary, there are also some wholesome roots, which are just contrary of these three roots. That is instead of greed then we have non-greed or generosity aloba when i'm so much attached to my things i cannot share with others but when you have this aloba or non-greed then you are very generous to share or your health or your uh, property or your ideas with others you are being very generous and instead of this hatred or anger then we have this remedy of loving kindness adosa Sorry, it should be Adosa. I have to correct it. Before I send you this slide, I will correct it. Sorry. Can you see non hatred or loving kindness? It should be Adosa, no? not Dosa. So here yeah, I have done mistake. I will correct it. Non delusion or wisdom, that should be Amoha. So that's very simple. Loba, craving, Aloba, non craving, non attachment, or generosity. Dosa, anger, ah, dosa, non hatred, is that loving kindness? Amoha, ah, delusion, not knowing what to do. It's um, contradictory, is the non delusion of wisdom, amoha. Ah, so they are called wholesome because they are mentally healthy, morally blameless, and no fault, never wrong protective of pleasant result, sukha vipaka, right? Then the last one I will conclude now in a minute by sharing with you this 
criteria. Um, criteria to judge good and bad. How do we judge it is good, it is bad? How do we decide it should be done or it should not be done? So here I quote our rector Seattle's um, uh, preaching. One factor is regret. Is it regretful after the action is done? Or is it not regretful? If it is regretful, please don't do that. It is akusala, it is harmful. And result, does it produce painful result or does it produce happy result? So these are very easy criteria that we can, we can test our mind from time to time. Now that uh, I, I don't know if I have uh, positive with the coronavirus because I don't have test kit to test uh, to check myself or to test myself, right? For this physical health, we need uh, the instrument. But for our mental health, we have this criteria. We don't need to go anywhere. We can always judge. Of course, we have still have this unwholesome and akusala from time to time, but we have to form that habit. We have to determine ourselves. Okay. We will try to be careful. We will try to be mindful. We will put in effort at least to check it. And even though we may not be able to destroy it, at least by the power of this mindfulness, by the power of this effort of viriya, then by this contemplation, we will try to do less. It means we will try to be mindful from time to time. So this is the message that I would like to share with you today. Um, taking home messages to judge the criteria, what is good, what is bad, and how our physical body is composed of the re realities that is mind and body, which tend to change according to the conditions. That's why they are known as the condition states. And since we are living in the conventional world, we can't focus only on the ultimate truth, but for the realization or for the liberation, of course, we need to have true or real understanding of these realities. But since living in the conventional world, we also have to take care of the, um, this conventional truth, like the state, uh, social status or the morality or the obligation of the human society for that uh, we have always have to deal with the concept or the penalty. So this is what I have discussed today. And I hope that it would be beneficial to you in a way. So I think it should be enough for today from my part. So if there is any question relating to what I have discussed, then you can raise question. Um, when I say that it is related because there are many parts that I have left unexplained or I have la left untouched. So um, any question relating to this topic or today's discussion? Okay, thank you so much for your kind attention. I really appreciate, and I hope we had a good time sharing together. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Siali, for your very clear explanation. So now we, uh, uh, that anybody want to ask questions, you can uh, raise your hand on the, uh, the your, your chat box. So uh, now, uh, one uh, one up W, right? So I will ask you to unmute it so that you can raise question to Siali. Yes, please. So uh, Siali, I have a question regarding the mental state. So when you say like mental state, it's not just the emotion, right? I. Your question is, are the mental states emotions? Correct. Yes. Thank you for these questions. And it's also um, what draw interest of many people. Yes, emotions pertain to the mental states, but not all the mental states are emotion. For example, um, regarding this mental aggregate, we have all together four. The first one is consciousness that knows the object. Right, And for this mental state, we have three aggregates we call kanda or three groups. The first one is feeling group, right? Feeling, 
Uh, are, are you Myanmar? Are you Burmese? Yeah, I'm Burmese. Yes. Yes, thank you. So we Burmese people, when we talk about feeling, uh, Vedana, the Pali word is Vedana. We are also familiar. I hope you're also familiar with this term Vedana. We tend to have some sort of unpleasant or painful feeling, right? Vedana. But actually, Vedana is not so. Vedana can be, can represent pleasant, both pleasant and unpleasant, sometimes neutral as well. So the nature of this Vedana is the um, just mere experience in the object. Okay, just mere experience in the object. This is Vedana or feeling because there is also some sort of thinking that is feeling and emotion the same. From Abhidhamma's standpoint, it is not so, right? Feeling is not yet emotion. Yes, it is a felt state in mind, right? But it is not yet uh, emotion. Another one, perception. Perception means taking note in mind. And we have altogether 52 mental states. Let's at least you might remember the number 52. So feeling is one, Vedana. Perception, this taking note, mental note, Sanya, except these two, the remaining five zero, in that group of mental state, we can have this emotion. For example, this Loba, Dosa, Moha, they are considered to be negative emotions or poisons. And in the same way, it's contrary, at Loba, loving kindness, at Dosa, oh, sorry, at Loba, generosity, at Dosa, loving kindness, and at Moha, or this wisdom. And we also have this from the Brahma Vihara, right? Compassion, and then appreciative join, Karuna, Mudita, and we also have sort of BD, right? And yes, we have quite a number of emotion and they pertain to the Jita Sika, but not all mental states or Jita Sika are emotions. And so in the Abhidhamma, from the Abhidhamma standpoint, emotion pertains to a particular group of mental states. So it's very wide in the social context as well, we have this what we call human conscious, hiri and otaba. Out because we will come later, but now I can explain you briefly. Hiri means out of respect for yourself, um, you don't do evil because you have self-esteem, self-aspect. And otaba, this is out of respect for your family because of your social status, because of your educational background, or because you are a Burmese, because you're a Buddhist, or because you are a good citizen of the world, you don't do evil. These two states, they are also considered to be the uh, social emotion. So uh, my answer is that emotion pertains to the mental states, but not all mental states are emotion. A mental state is wider in context. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You, uh, thank you, Siali, for the answer. So next question uh, is uh, no, no. So now I will ask you to unmute it. Yes, uh, no, no, you can ask question now. Uh, uh, this is not a question, this is just an ask for, uh, I want to study Bali language, and so uh, would you give me any suggestion for this? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> His question is that he wanted to learn Pali language and any suggestion. Yes. So yes. Um, you can, I have some websites or some Zoom classes who, which uh, the Pali language is teaching. Then I can suggest you, then how may I contact yes. with you? Um, I email. 
Uh, I mean, like you, you can get my my email or my contact from the organizers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we will follow up on this. Uh, uh, actually, uh, public language, uh, public learning classes for yes. you. Uh, no, no. So we will contact you later on. So any. So we will move on to the next question. So, but right now, actually, uh, anybody want to ask any question? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You, you can mute back. Um, now, no more question. Okay, so since Julie, uh, there is no more question for now, so we will uh, end our class today. So maybe Siali, uh, you want to Julie end our session with the the, the chanting or reciting? Yes, yes. Um, either you are a follower of a Buddhist or not, uh, this Dhamma can really give us the peace of mind and a better way of life. So in appreciation of that, uh, I requested that you bear in mind the teachings of the Buddha last long. So with this, uh, those who can recite, then may join me or otherwise we can also bear in mind with this noble thought. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. In Pali, we call Buddha Sasanam Jiram Deitutu. Buddha Sasanam means sasana mean teaching. Buddha Sasana means the teaching of the Buddha. Jiram means long time. Deitutu means it lasts or it stands. So, uh, with this uh, earnest wish, we will uh, conclude our class. Buddha Sasanam Jiram Deitutu. Buddha Sasanam Jiram Deitutu. Buddha Sasanam Jiram Deitutu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. May the teachings of the Buddha last long. Well done, well done, well done. Sadhu me well done. Right? So that is the meaning. Thank you so much for your kind participation. Uh, despite different time zone and different from the different part of the world, I hope at least you have some bring home message that would be benefit for you to spend these sort of two hours time and like some might have come in much earlier uh, to, to wait for me and I apologize for any inconveniences that have caused this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good day. Have a good morning. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Siali. Then also thank you everybody to attending this class and uh, see you next week. Okay, see you. Thank you. Take care, Siali. Thank you, you too.